Hey, welcome to my channel and welcome to another empties video. I did one of these, I think, back in September and then I had planned to do them monthly and then it com just completely fell off my radar and it's February, first week of February, and I finally remembered to do another one. And in that time, I've definitely thrown out things. That's that's part of the reason why I haven't done one of these videos again is because I'm just so used to like, something's out put it in the recycling bin or put it in the trash. But I do have a few things that I remember to keep and some things I might just picture on the screen so you you know. Before I get started, I'd really appreciate if you could give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, comment down below, all of that good stuff. So I have some skincare as well as some makeup stuff that I'm gonna go through. The first two I will go through, I don't actually have the bottles for. I have new bottles for, I so spoiler alert, I repurchased them. The first one is the Ordinary Retinol 0.5% in Squalane. So this is my second or third bottle. I've been using this for several months by now. I think it may have even been like half a year, but I started using this per recommendation from Skincare by Hiram and I absolutely love it. It doesn't irritate my skin, it doesn't cause any sensitivity, and retinol is one of those things that everyone that's like knows about skincare and aging say, like if you don't wanna age in your 20s or earlier, start wearing SPF and start using retinol. So this is like a lower grade retinol as far as I, I believe that I'm understanding. It's not very expensive. It was less than $10, but a little bit goes a long way. I just need a few drops each night to go all over my face and I really love it. And I love the idea that it is preventing any further aging. So I look snatched in the future. The Ordinary has a few other types of retinol, so you can have a variety of, to choose from, but I love that the Ordinary prices are just so affordable. The other thing is also from The Ordinary, it's their Niacinamide 10% plus Zinc 1%. This I use in the morning and the retinol I use at night. So this is also a full bottle that I just repurchased. I like using this because it helps with any dark spots on my face, like if I have acne scars or if I'm like picking at my skin and it leaves marks, this helps it to regenerate and get rid of it quicker. And it also, I feel like helps with the oiliness of my skin. I've been using this and a a couple other things so it's hard to like exactly pinpoint how much each thing is doing but I like to concentrate this in the areas of my face that are the oiliest and I feel like it's definitely helped. My skin has been a lot more towards normal skin over like the past six months to a year and I think that is one of the products that is greatly helping it. So as far as these two empties definitely repurchased would and plan to in the future. Okay, the next product I have, I mentioned in a couple of videos, it's the Ulta Beauty SPF. It's their 30 Sun Protection Broad Spectrum Mineral Matte Tinted Face Lotion. So I use this like completely up, like bending the tube, trying to get everything out of it that I could. I like this. It was a really good SPF. I also liked that it was tinted because if I wasn't wearing makeup that day, I preferred having a tint in this than the typical white cast that a lot of SPFs have. Obviously this wouldn't work for a lot of people because their skin might be too light or too dark that it just wouldn't blend in and look good. I'm pretty sure they only had one color Coming out of the bottle, it looked much darker than my skin, but once it was on, it blended in, and I think it looked more natural, especially when it absorbed in. But it's water-resistant, reef-friendly, cruelty-free, and I would repurchase this in the future. I didn't repurchase it. I got a different SPF just to try out, because I, unless I find like a holy grail item, I like to try out different brands and different products just to keep things exciting. I believe this was around $15, but Ulta always has coupons out, so it was cheaper than that. And it lasted me for a good while. Like, I've had this since the summer, if not possibly before. And so, yeah, I would recommend this product. I have another face product. This is the Trader Joe's Ultra Hydrating Gel Moisturizer with Aloe and Green Tea Extract. So, this you get a good amount and I did like fully use it up. It's not one of those gel moisturizers where they make the bottle look big and then you have like this tiny, tiny amount. Pretty tall jar of moisturizer for, I think it was maybe $10 at Trader Joe's. So obviously you can't purchase this online, but you can go in store if there's a Trader Joe's by you. I 
I didn't mind it. Like it was fine. It was moisturizing. It didn't break me out. It didn't cause any redness or sensitivity or anything like that. It was light. It felt nice on the skin. I've just really come to know over the past year that I do not vibe with gel moisturizers. I don't know what it is. I'm just not a fan of the consistency. I'd much rather have like a cream lotion. Like if you like gel moisturizers, I think you would really like this. It was a good price lasted for a while it was a good moisturizer that was actually moisturizing but i just there's something about the texture of the gel on my skin and just ugh, it's something i can't quite pinpoint but i just don't like them like any kind of gel moisturizer because i've tried a couple of others and i just like ah they're always just lackluster i feel like part of it might be because like gel moisturizers will moisturize but you don't get that emollient moisturizing feeling that you do with like a creamy face lotion i personally would not repurchase this i'm also so tired of moisturizers in jars because just the bacteria of like putting in a q-tip to get some out or your fingers like even if i wash my hands right before applying moisturizer there's still like dust and oils on your finger that you're getting in the jar i'm not a fan <laughs> i'd much rather something in like a squeeze or a pump okay so now i'm going to dive into the makeup empties this is the benefit gimme brow brow gel so this is just like a small little sample size that i got in an ipsy bag i got it like a long time ago i've had this for a while i don't use it every day that's why it's lasted me so long but I feel like for the size, you definitely get a lot of uses out of this. I do like it, and sometimes I would wear this just by itself. Most of the time, I would do this and then also a pencil to add more shape and definition to my eyebrows. So I like it as a product, and it was a good shade for me. However, I wouldn't spend the price for a full size. Benefit can be like a little bit pricey. I think for some things, like for eyebrow products, I think there are just so many good drugstore options that going to the other side, the more expensive side of Ulta to get a brow product is just kind of not something I'm wanting to do. And like every drugstore brand has a brow gel at this point, so I don't think you need to spend that much. If you like Benefit the brand, then, and you haven't tried this, I think it's worth a try. But personally, I'd rather go with something cheaper because I don't know if the difference in price is equal to the difference in quality. We have another brow product. This is the JCAT Precision Micro Slim Brow Pencil. So I exclusively use slim brow pencils because I'm just, I mess it up. So I saw this on Ulta. It was like 50% off. It was like a major JCAT sale. So I got this and a couple other things. And I did fully use this up. And it was a good price. And I like JCAT as brand with all those disclaimers. But I do not like this product and I would never purchase it again. It was okay enough that I could use it up. It wasn't like so terrible that I tossed it out and wouldn't even use it. Because there have been products where it's just so much worse to actually use the product than to throw it away. Even though that feels wasteful. But this one, like I could actually use it up. But it is just so waxy and like kind of chunky and it doesn't go on smooth but it's also not hard it doesn't really like blend in i think like i had to really spoolie the product into my brows i think to get it to actually look good because it seemed like it just didn't want to go on i just don't like the formula it did not go on well it, i spent a long time doing my brows whenever i had to use this and there are other drugstore pencils that i've tried out that i actually like i was just trying something new and not for me Next product I have is also from an Ipsy bag. That's like a lot of my makeup, honestly. And it's this Tarte Sex Kitten Eyeliner. It's felt tip and the tip is really long and you can get a pretty thin line and precise line because it is very pointed. And I did like this a lot while I used it. It was a really good eyeliner. It seemed to have pretty good staying power. I can't remember exactly if it was waterproof. It doesn't say waterproof on it. This is the same situation as the Benefit Brow product. I really liked it and like I would use it again, but I wouldn't purchase it. Tarte is obviously a lot more expensive than drugstore brands and I have a couple of drugstore eyeliners that I really, really love. So I just wouldn't spend the extra money to go for this when I have cheaper alternatives. And while I am fine with felt tip, like I totally like felt tip eyeliners, I do prefer brush tip. And I have the Physician's Formula Waterproof Eye Booster Eyeliner that has a brush tip and it's just, it's a lot cheaper and I really like it already. It's got a cute little cat on the top. I absolutely love that. Next product is a mascara. This is the CoverGirl Exhibitionist Mascara. So I got this because I was out of mascara and I had a coupon for CoverGirl. So I was like, 
head. Yeah, so I went to Meyer and I got this, and this is a really, really great volumizing mascara. It's not tremendous at lengthening, but I feel like my lashes looked really full when I would use this. This isn't the waterproof version. They also have a waterproof version. This is what the brush looks like. I really like this mascara. I used to use it on its own, but I started using it with a lengthening mascara, and it was like perfect every time. I like it on its own, but I think combining it with another mascara just like really makes it that much better. I believe it was around $10 and obviously you can get it at the drugstore. And I would purchase this again. I really enjoyed the formula. It didn't transfer very much. Very black, very volumizing, and I would recommend. Okay, two other empties that I have that I know I accidentally threw out. One is the L'Oreal Total Repair Hair Mask. So it comes in like a jar and I'll put a picture on the screen. I got this hair mask per recommendation from someone else and I initially really liked it and I repurchased it. So I had gone through two bottles. I noticed that it wasn't doing that great of things on my hair when I switched shampoo and conditioner. So that's what made me think like, okay, maybe how I thought it was acting on my skin was actually my conditioner. And then I've also made the effort to cut out brands that are not cruelty free and L'Oreal is not cruelty free. So that is another good reason why I will not be purchasing this hair mask again or any of their products. Objectively, it was an okay hair mask, but I think I thought it was a lot better when I hadn't tried other hair masks. And once I tried others, even if they were around the same price, it was like, oh, this is, that can do a lot better. The other product is the Ex Mondo Prismatic Glow Hair Mask. So I did a whole video dedicated on this as well as the Electric Rain and I said I was going to be doing an update video. And I feel really bad that I haven't done that yet, but I planned to do a video once I ran out of the bottle and that thing lasted so long. Like I just ran out of it recently. Yeah, I posted that video nine months ago and I think it was a month ago that I ran out of it. So I started using that when my hair was in a horrible state, like totally, completely wrecked. I couldn't straighten my hair or use like any heat products on it for a couple of months I think I went without because it was just so so brittle and it was just a bad time. So I did really like it initially and I wash my hair like max two times a week. So if you wash your hair every single day and you want to use this every single day it'll obviously not last as long but I think it only recommends using it every so often like not every time you wash. And I do plan on actually doing an update video very soon because I actually just got my second bottle in so obviously I would repurchase this item I really really like it it is a bit pricier than other hair masks but I think it is worth it personally for me for my hair I think it works really really well and I guess I'll leave some information for the update video and those are all of the empties that I have and can recall. Thank you so much for watching this video once again I appreciate it if you could give it a like subscribe comment uh, share? I don't know. You could share it. I don't know who you share it with or why, but share it. Uh, and that's all. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support, and I'll hopefully see you in my next video. Bye.